Hey, I'm Dave, TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet, and uh, thank you for being with us. It's Monday at 5 o'clock, and that means you'll find us at Rainbow West Christian Bookstore in Albany, Oregon. And uh, so very glad to uh, be with you tonight. We have a pre-recorded interview with uh, a man of prayer. Uh, I've, I've ran into Peter Carlson a couple times. He lives in Albany. And uh, Michael Medved was at an event here in Oregon, in Corvallis. And uh, it was a, a community outreach talking about, I believe it was a same-sex marriage initiative. Or no, it was um, funding of abortion in Oregon, which if the initiative drive that was uh, pursued by those supporting this initiative, if it had been passed, it would have prevented Oregon from using state funding to pay for abortion. Anyway, Peter Carlson was one of the guys who was praying and this event involved Michael Medved, it was in Corvallis, and uh, Peter's just a great man of prayer, and I bumped into him a couple times here in Albany, Oregon, and he's also involved in uh, something called the Global Day of Worship, which is going to be 12-12-12, December 12, 2012. So uh, Peter's not able to be with us right now because they're organizing that event. So we had a chance earlier today to talk to Peter, and you're going to see the Global Day of Prayer logo, and you'll see also a picture of Peter uh, praying at a prayer um, get-together. I believe it was in Portland. But we did this interview earlier today. Uh, one of the things, before we play that, we do want to remind you is that we're still selling raffle tickets for our trip to Disneyland, and you can buy those tickets here at Rainbow West Christian Bookstore here in Albany, Oregon. And the drawing is going to be December 24th at 6 p.m., and the winner will get $2,700 in travel vouchers, and you can use that for travel. You can use it also for uh, airline travel, for accommodations, lodging at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California, park admission, or for souvenirs or lodging or food. But you have to buy a raffle ticket before you can win, and you can buy those here at Rainbow West Christian Bookstore in Albany, also at uh, Justin Cruz State Farm Insurance in Corvallis, KGAL Radio in Albany, and um, Rainbow West, Justin Cruz State Farm Insurance, and KGAL Radio. Those are the three outlets that you can buy those from. Or just to contact us at the Jesus Network. Our website is thejesusnetwork.net. So that's what's going on with um, the Disneyland drawing. December 24th we'll draw for that. Prayer. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And I think one of the things we talk about with um, in our interview today is that we as Americans have a hard time praying, and especially with praying without ceasing. A lot of times churches have a hard time fielding people that will man a 24-hour prayer watch over a weekend. We as Americans like things to happen fast. And sometimes with prayer, sometimes God doesn't answer prayer fast. And I think we, especially as Americans who live in this fast-paced, fast-food culture, need to realize the power and the persistence of prayer uh, and the power of faith. So we talk about prayer and specifically how it relates to the, the, the global day of worship that we're going to be talking about in this interview that we'll do right now. This is TJN, the Jesus Network. I'm Dave Adams, and we're going to go now to that interview about the Global Day of Prayer with Peter Carlson. Hi, I'm Dave, TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet, and we have the pleasure of talking with Peter Carlson on the phone line with us. And Peter has been involved in the past and continues to be with the, uh, the House of Prayer and Celebration in Albany, Oregon. Something that's happening globally is a global day of worship, and there's churches in the Mid Willamette Valley that are participating. Jesus Pursuit Church, which is at 2110 Sandy M Highway in Albany, is participating. First of all, Peter, thank you for being with us on TJN. Oh, thanks, Dave, for the chance to talk about the global day of worship. I'm really excited about it. So tell me about the global day of worship. What's going to be happening and why? Well, what's happening is that there will be 24 hours of worship ascending to the Lord from throughout the earth starting um, in the time zone furthest in the east, 7 to 8 p.m. local time, and progressing around the world. 
at the same time all the, throughout the world, or is it cascading from one time zone to the other? From one time zone to the next. So it starts in one time zone and then and just like dominoes goes to the next one. Exactly. Why are you involved? Well, I got to meet the founder that the Lord gave the vision to. Her name is Eunice. And um, she was attending the North America Prayer Summit in Arizona last year, so we, we had a chance to get acquainted there. Uh, there was a Global Day of Worship last year on 11-11-11. This year it's on 12-12-12. Why is the date significant? Um, I think that that was just what the Lord put on her heart, um, other than the, the numbers being easy to remember. I don't think there's a particular significance. Why the need for prayer right now? Well, this uh, kind of prayer, this worship, is um, something that is actually spiritual warfare. Uh, if you think about the time of Jehoshaphat when he sent the worshipers out at the head of the army and God routed the enemy, and the Israelites didn't even have to fight, there's um, certainly a lot of spiritual warfare going on in the world, and um, we need to gain that ground by worshiping why a uh, 20 uh, a global day of it's it's listed as a global day of worship instead of a global day of prayer why is that well the, the whole focus is vertical um, and it's not asking for us to get something it's just on praising God so that's why it's it's uh, focus is worship rather than the broader prayer so I'm sure, I'm sure that you are asking people around the world at a certain time to, to just worship God. And is it open to them as how they want to do it, or would you prefer to see it structured? What's the vision here? It's wide open. The, uh, the amount of organization that has gone into this is pretty minimal. It's just encouraging people to take a part, get together in local churches or home groups or just around your own kitchen table and, and take some time to put on some worship music and, and pray. Um, it's, it's just an awesome time for the whole body of Christ around the world to unite together in an expression of adoration. So you mentioned that this is designed to start in one time zone and then cascade into another. So one time zone does an hour and the next time zone does a, the second hour. So is it all simultaneous or not? Uh, just like you first described, it's one hour after another so that it's easy for people, you know, the 7 to 8 p.m. time frame in the local time zone is a time when more people can participate in something like this. So if it's possible to get together in a corporate setting, that's what uh, would be wonderful to do. What's going to be happening at Jesus Pursuit Church? And again, uh, it's 12-12-12, December 12, 2012, 7 to 9 p.m., Jesus Pursuit Church in Albany. So if people aren't used to the worship style there or wonder what's going to be happening, what's going to happen when they attend? Well, this is uh, something that's being uh, put together by multiple groups throughout the valley, and it will be um, upbeat worship. The uh, host church, Jesus Pursuit, has agreed to use their facility for it. The worship team is made up of people from multiple churches. And um, the first hour, actually, Albany gets to be the site that is being webcast. So uh, the Global Day of Worship has um, a link on their website where uh, people can go and tune in to the different time zones as it progresses around the world. And uh, the worship time at Jesus Pursuit Church is being webcast for the Pacific time zone. So there's a webcast that's, that just goes from time zone to time zone, and somebody somebody can can tune in and watch this as it's going all around the world. Exactly. That's amazing. How long has this been in the process? I believe that it's been planned for the whole year. I mean, uh, since last year, 11-11-11, I'm sure that Eunice and the team has been working on the next event for this year. So, Peter, what are you asking people to do? Well, if it's possible to come join us at Jesus Pursuit Church, I believe that it's going to be a wonderful evening of worship, and you get the whole two hours, 7 to 9 p.m. If you can't be there, but you can tune in on the web, uh, 7 to 8 p.m. for the Pacific time zone and whatever other times work for you um, throughout that day. 
you're involved in the House of Prayer and Celebration Hopsy. Is that what they call it, Hopsy? Correct. Hopsy in Albany, Oregon. What is that all about? The House of Prayer and Celebration began with 13 months of continuous prayer day after day for the Willamette Celebration in July of 2010. Since then, a number of people that were involved in that really felt like we were to keep on praying and establish a house of prayer. So we do have daily prayer times at 6.30 every morning, plus uh, several other times during the week. We have about 18 hours a week where people can come and, and join in prayer times, and the schedule is posted on our website. What is your website, and where is the praying happening at? It's hopc.us, H-O-P-C dot U-S. And uh, most of the prayer times are held at the Young Life building in Albany at 620 Cleveland Avenue. And then uh, there are other times as well at Jefferson Evangelical Church, at Valley Christian Center. Um, So people should just uh, check for the details there. Peter, you're a, a man of prayer, correct? Yes. What would you say to people who, and I'm sure you've heard this, I've heard it before, God doesn't answer my prayers, or I don't believe my prayers are effective, and so people stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, something that we all face is what's God's timing and what's God's answer. Sometimes the answer is yes, that's the one we like. Sometimes the answer is no, and sometimes the answer is wait. And so if we give up praying, then um, perhaps we haven't prayed through. So... uh, The idea is that in Revelation it talks about the bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And I think that it takes some time for a particular prayer to be answered sometimes. Um, We were instructed to pray and keep on praying. And so there's always a mystery about prayer. There's no pat answers. There's no formulas. But there are some principles that we can follow. And one of them is, God loves to hear our prayers. He wants us to be in tune with him and to seek him and to trust in him. And we do that by expressing our desires to him. Peter, do you think, I'm just asking for your personal um, feelings or your personal observation, that we here in the United States have a real difficult time in persisting in prayer because we have a culture that is fast food, uh, I want my gratification now, and I want my, like I often say, I want my happy meal in five minutes and my miracle in three. It, that's a problem here in the States, isn't it? I agree, it is. So what would you tell Americans to say, you know, the Bible does say pray without ceasing and not to give up. And we as as a people, as a culture, have a problem where if we don't see instant gratification, we give up. What would you say to us as Americans that may struggle with that? Well, I think if we get into the Bible and we read it consistently, we see that there are many examples of perseverance and endurance. And in fact, the scripture says if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, that it will be fruitful in our lives. And um, two of those qualities are perseverance and endurance. So uh, we just need to press in. That expresses our trust in God, our dependence on him. We admit that we are powerless to accomplish the things that have eternal significance, that uh, our help is only in the Lord. So by expressing that trust in him, by submitting ourselves to his timetable, then he's honored and glorified in it, and we grow in godliness. That's really what we need is more Christ-likeness in our lives in order to see um, a witness come forth from us that will draw people to him. So the next question people sometimes ask is, how? and I, you mentioned just a moment ago there's no pat answers, how long do I pray about a specific topic? And if you could give some people some advice on how to hear God's voice, and I know that's a long process and it evolves with your relationship in God over time, but for people that are struggling with not hearing the voice of God and, not, and feeling very disconnected from God when they pray, When they ask that question, what do you tell them? How long do I pray, and how do I know God's leading? Well, one of those um, easy answers is push, pray until something happens. And, um, you know, that's not a bad guideline, because when 
we begin to just persevere, either God will show us how to change our prayers, he'll remove a burden from us, he will um, keep lining things up to bring about the answer that we're seeking. Hopefully we're, we're not just praying for quick, simple things, but we're also praying for life-changing, kingdom impact kinds of things that do take some time to bring together. So um, I, I think that God is looking for those that will have a great vision, pray prayers that are absolutely humanly impossible to accomplish, and see him glorified in it. So um, that kind of faith, I think, is what he's looking for in the earth. He, Jesus said, will I find faith in the earth when I return? And, um, you know, he's looking for the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, to have great faith. And that means that we're going to be praying prayers that take a while to get answered. And that faith um, can grow as we encourage each other. So uh, another thing, I think, besides praying until something happens is to pray with others. You know, share the, the burden with others. Um, discuss what burden God has given you and uh, collaborate with others. Uh, there's a great uh, collaboration taking place across the state of Oregon now called 24-7 Oregon where prayer groups from all over the state are getting connected. And more and more I see that that's what God's doing in the earth. That's why this global day of worship is something significant because we're doing it together around the world. We're being fitly joined together as the bride of Christ, and as we connect with one another and encourage each other, uh, we will see that unity come about that is an effective witness that will advance the kingdom. Do you see more of that going on, more of the connection across denominational lines and across churches, more as the body of Christ is, is starting to more unify and come together in some ways? Yes, I sure do. Uh, this last week at the City Impact Roundtable, in Beaverton at the Luis Palau headquarters uh, uh, involved the Pacific Northwest. So people were there from Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and even Sacramento. And um, we heard some awesome stories about how churches are working together in their communities to bring about transformation. In fact, um, Kevin Palau reported in the Portland area that they have 49 of the 50 largest churches that are working together. Now that that's astounding that some of the biggest churches that clearly have their hands full and lots of programs to take care of would put a priority on working together with each other. Again, uh, Peter, how do they get involved in the Global Day of Worship? Come together at Jesus Pursuit Church Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m., or uh, tune in on the web if they want to get in connected with the House of Prayer Hopsey in Albany, uh, how do they do that? At hopsey.us has all the details, or come join us any morning, 6.30 to 7.30, at the Young Life Building on 620 Cleveland Street. Okay. Peter, thank you very much. Peter Carlson, very involved in the House of Prayer and Celebration, and also helping promote uh, the Global Day of Worship, which will happen 7 to 9 p.m. around the Earth in that time frame. And uh, make sure to check out the website. We'll uh, put a link on our website, uh, the Jesus Network, uh, so you can find that and be directed to that as well. So it's December 12th, 7 to 9 p.m. at Jesus Pursuit Church, 2110 Sandy Am Highway in Albany. Albany. And, uh, Peter, thank you for all you do for the body of Christ. And thank you, Dave. God bless. Okay. This is TJN, the Jesus Network, all together. Ministries, denominations, believers in Jesus Christ, all together, we can change the planet through the help of Jesus Christ, through worship and through prayer. God bless, and uh, let's start praying. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave. Well, that's Peter Carlson, and that's what he had to say about prayer and the global day of worship. Isn't that a neat thing? 12, 12, 12. Um, 7 p.m. When 7 p.m. arrives at every time zone in the United in, in the United States, when 7 p.m. arrives at every time zone in the world on December 12th, as the planet turns around, there's going to be prayer coming from that part of the Earth. That's exciting. 
Uh, I'm very, very excited about that. You know, one of the things that I absolutely love about doing what we're doing here at the Jesus Network is just talking to all these Christians and ministries and uh, missionaries and just seeing what God is doing. He's doing some amazing things. And uh, even in these times of, of economic hardships, I was just talking to Connie, the manager here at Rainbow West uh, Christian Bookstore in Albany, Oregon, and they're kind enough to let us come here every Monday night at 5. And it's just exciting to see what God is doing. And even though charitable giving is down, and even though there's a lot of challenges out there facing a lot of ministries, uh, Christian ministries are continuing to be engaged, continuing to carry out the Great Commission, continuing to to do what God called us to do, and that's go and tell all the world about the good news of Jesus Christ, especially at this time of year. This is Christmas, and it's a lot more than tinsel, and it's a lot more than the presents, and so on and so forth. It's the fact that God, in all his, he created us, he created this planet, he did not have to send his son to be born in a manger in Bethlehem, uh, you know, in just, I guess, there's some that say he was born in a cave, but it was, a, you know, the, the tradition is it was a stable, but it was humble beginnings. And then he served, he washed the disciples' feet, he, Jesus Christ was the example of, of what we should be as a servant. Uh, but he didn't have to do that, he was God. He did it anyway, and then he died on the cross, this, 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 horrific death so that that we could be reestablished in a relationship with God. Because of sin in the garden, somebody had to pay the price. And the perfect Lamb of God came on Christmas, was born, spent 33 years in ministry, died a horrible death, rose from the dead, and by doing that, redeemed us and restored our relationship with God. God didn't have to do that. But he, he wanted it. He made the step to restore a relationship and to correct the relationship that we, as human beings, wrecked. Because we ate the apple, so to speak. But God, in his mercy, mercifulness, God full of mercy, found a way to redeem us. And through his, it was giving his own son to die. That's what Christmas is all about. It's about the gift of the Savior. The gift of Jesus Christ to come into this world to restore us to the Father. That's what Christmas is all about. So, Peter, thank you for all you do. Everybody that's involved in the Global Day of Worship, 121212, thank you for all you do. And if you're in ministry or church or whatever, thank you for all you do. Because Jesus Christ told us to go into all the world preach the gospel, raise the, uh, raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, set the captives free. The Great Commission is we're to go into all the world and tell people about Jesus Christ. And um, we're to do that. That's what we're to do as followers of Jesus. So on this Christmas holiday, Merry Christmas. Remember what this season means. This season is incredible when you think about it, about the implications and about what God did. Uh, it, just, it just blows you away. So, be encouraged. Be blessed. Have a very Merry Christmas. And we'll be back here next week, December 17th, with another guest live here at uh, Rainbow West Christian Bookstore. Brenda Homer will be our guest. And Brenda has an amazing story to tell. You'll want to see it. If you can't catch the live webcast, uh, you can watch it uh, on YouTube or on our website, thejesusnetwork.net. So we'll see you next Monday. And in the meantime, don't forget to buy your raffle ticket. $2,700 trip to Disneyland. We're going to be giving away Christmas Eve, 6 p.m., Pacific Time. Just tune into our website, thejesusnetwork.net. We're going to be drawing for it live. And uh, maybe you'll win. But first you have to buy a raffle ticket. They're $10 each. And uh, the prize is $2,700. You can take that out in airfare, in uh, accommodations at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California. Uh, lodging, food, souvenirs, whatever you want. So be blessed. 
I'm Dave Adams, TJN, the Jesus Network, and thanks to Connie. Connie, thank you very much for allowing us to come here every Monday at 5 and do our, do our little show and just do our little part in telling the story of what God is doing. If you have a story you'd like to share, if you have a testimony you'd like to share on TJN, love to hear from you. Just send me an email, dave at thejesusnetwork.net. Be encouraged, be blessed. I'm Dave, TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet, and we can do it with the love of Jesus Christ and with the Holy Spirit inside of us. May we be the hands and feet of Jesus. May people see Christ through us in our words, in our actions. May we preach the gospel. You know the thing that I love is go throughout all the world, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. That's what we need to do. Be blessed. I'm Dave, TJN. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See you next, next Monday night.